Neighborn, Nartien, Waterang Actinook, Mokbarian, Waterang Bagaruk, Monomath, Mirabea, Nilinga, Waterang Beak, Karangarabu, Bunjo the Eagle, Wa the Crow, Kimbani Ba, Diane Gilson. Welcome to Waterang Country. Live from Waterang Country, welcome to Lance TV. Coming to you from the palatial new Camp Street Studios in Ballarat, get ready to laugh, think, love and sparkle. And now, it's time to turn that camp dial all the way up to fabulous. Here's your host, the multi-award winning Lance-tastic, Lance DePoyle. <laughs> Welcome to Let's TV! I'm Lance DeBoyle, coming to you live, 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 live from Wadarung Country here in Ballarat, the resting place, Bunjali Eagle. That's what they tell me. Hope you've got yourself a drink. Hope you've got yourself a chair. Let's sit down. <laughs> My special dance move for everyone tonight. Um, you have all fabulous people. Thank you for... Tuning in tonight, um, as I said, we're live from Ballarat, and we are, um, it's Good Friday. That's what I wanted to say, it's Good Friday. For those of you who observe this period of time, have a nice time in church over the next few days. For those of you who don't, enjoy all the chocolate you can lay your hands on. In fact, I had, um, I actually had some hot cross buns earlier today, and while I was eating them with lashings of butter and fruit, with lashings of butter, I suddenly realised that what I was eating was a scone version of raisin bread and went, oh. So it hadn't dawned on me before that that's what hot cross buns really are, scone versions of raisin bread. So you can have any time you like, I suppose. Uh, something else I'd like to bring to the fore as well, uh, I have signed up uh, for the Black Dogs Institute's uh, mullet, wear, wear a mullet for um, suicide prevention. There's uh, nine people each day do pass away due to su suicide. I've signed my, my, beautiful, my beautiful mullet up. Uh, if you want details on how to make a donation, uh, you can go to the Lance TV website at www.lancetv.com.au and um, click the link. You'll see the little, uh, the little image for the uh, mullet and uh, click on that and um, chuck us fiver or whatever you've got. Uh, I think I'm only asking to raise $750 this year. It's the first time I've done it. So if you're keen to um, help people who are experiencing suicide or have suicide ideation, uh, it'd be good to give a few dollars to a uh, good cause and, um, you know, support my mullet to support others. Talking about supporting others, our very special guest on the show is somebody who is um, you know, known across the state for supporting others these days. I would like you to charge your glasses, be upstanding, clap and welcome to the stage, Cheryl Solosi. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> you got it. Did I get it? <laughs> oh, darling, how are you? Mwah. Mwah. Oh, you're gorgeous. Yep. Um, please <laughs> sit down before, before you fall down. down. Yep. Uh, you're amazing, you are. Oh, thank you. And uh, the, reason, the reason why I, was, I struggled with Solosi sal <laughs> is we, I've known Cheryl for a good 12 months and I've been calling it Jalossi all this time because there's all these sort of Zs and Os and, and accents above things because it's a Hungarian last name, yeah. isn't it? super wog. Where? Superwog. Yep. Hey. Hungarian. Wow. Yeah. Do you know much Hungarian besides your own last name? Gulash. Yeah, nice. Yeah, it's yeah. A Paprika. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Two words. Amazing. Yeah. So you, um, you are here tonight because you've been such of service to the community that, uh, what was it, about two or three weeks ago? Two. At the Victorian Pride Awards, you walked away with um, the Victorian Pride Award for volunteer of the year, how did how how did you feel? Numb. Um, uh, my first thing was to swear, obviously, copious amounts, and 
just to yell out across the room to Ange, just going, fuck, and trying to get all those out before I got onto stage and not fall up the stairs was a priority. Um, yeah, it was just utter shock. Even coming home, all the way home, all that weekend, it was just shock. Amazing, um, because you are really a very humble person. You're not, you're really not keen to be in the spotlight all that often, really, are you? Yeah. No, <laughs> that would be right. That's, yeah. that, that's why Cheryl is um, normally on the other side of the cameras um, filming us. And um, tonight, there is no stage manager. Sophie, Sophie's there pressing the buttons. We've got Patrick down there at Channel 31 making sure that we go to ad breaks all in a good time. But um, we're kind of coasting along kind of, you know, um, what's it called? Um, commando style, but with cameras. <laughs> <laughs> yes. San, sans, sans camera person. Sans camera person slash law manager. Yeah. Amazing. Well, thank you for agreeing to be on the show. Um, yeah. Are you looking at me going, yeah, okay, whatever you yeah. reckon? <laughs> no, I thought... The, this was the only way I was going to ever come on the show, was if I won this award. Amazing. <laughs> we're going to talk more about yeah. that a little bit later. But right now, we're going to cut to our first segment, which is the Lance TV Artist Corner. And tonight, our artist focus is on Melbourne artist, K, um, uh, K, oh, gee, K, 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 KL, I, was, I wrote, it, wrote it down and everything. K, K, <laughs> no, it's not going to come. Kyle McCurst. Kyle McCurst. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. We'll see you when you get back. So my name is Kel McHurst. My pronouns are they and them. And I am a graphic memoirist uh, writing on Warren Jury Land in Brimbank. And I write stories about mental illness, queerness, relationships and growing up in a religious cult. So comics was not always my thing. I was very much an illustrator. I liked watercolours and markers. And I did like big paintings. And then when I was first diagnosed with mental illness in my early 20s, I found that I was very, very creatively blocked and I was really having trouble illustrating. And that's how I came to comics because comics, for whatever reason, were much more accessible to me. And so I started writing comic stories about what I was going through with my journey with anorexia at the time and started writing these comic stories about how it felt in my brain and I was using them as a tool to demonstrate to my partner at the time hey this is what it feels like and am I weird and as I was doing it I realized that this was really acting as a kind of art therapy for me and really helping me to understand myself better as well and so I wanted to keep doing it so I started posting the pages online to hold myself accountable and then as I was posting them online, I found a bit of an audience and I had people writing to me and saying, yeah, this is how it feels and you're not alone and that makes me feel less alone. And I really want to normalise the journey of having mental illness because so many people do and it's not that big a deal and we all deal with it and we all get treatment for it in whatever way feels normal to us. It's okay to have mental illness. I also really want to normalise being queer and figuring out your journey, however that looks. My journey to figuring out that I was queer was pretty tumultuous because I grew up in a religious cult and so I carried a lot of shame about being a queer person. And I think those journeys need to be shared because we as queer people, we so often feel isolated. We so often feel alone. And I really think that we need to share what our journeys look like because guaranteed there's someone that's had a similar path to you. <laughs> different projects have landed differently with different people. But the project that I find the most fun to work on is a series that I have called No, She's Not My Sister, which is a series of really short gag comics about my wife and my life with my wife. And I find a lot of people really relate to those comics because the dynamic that we have in our relationship seems to be one that a lot of people have, whereby one partner is very long-suffering and the other partner is a bit of a brat and constantly annoys them. And I find that really enjoyable and a lot of people pick that up and say, oh my gosh, yes, my partner is just like this, but it's so cute and I love them forever. So I really enjoy drawing those comics because they feel really fun and silly. 
So the biggest project that I'm working on at the moment, which is um, available to read free online, is a comic called Triggered, a story of PTSD, a plebiscite and the patriarchy. And this is like, fair warning, it's a pretty serious comic. It deals with gendered violence and my journey with being diagnosed with PTSD from gendered violence and my journey with coming to understand uh, where my PTSD came from, the treatment that I got, and also tied into that a lot of the homophobia that I faced growing up in the the way that I did. So that one's available to read online for free. Uh, I have a lot of my comics available for print as well, so you can usually find me at Zine Fair. So, for example, I'm going to be at the TBH Zine Fair in Ballarat uh, coming up soon. Getting them in person is great because the books are really heavy. (laughs) I don't want anyone to have to pay Australia Post postage prices. I really think that to be an artist... All you need is a story. Like, you don't have to be really, really good at drawing or painting or writing. You just need a story. And if that story is important to you, then guarantee that story will be important to someone else. Just draw whatever you're capable of drawing. Make your characters little triangle people. Make your characters a leaf. Make your characters a stick figure. That's fine. The important thing is you've got a story that you want to tell and that means it's important because it will absolutely resonate with someone else. So just have a fiddle around, find the media that works for you, find the style that works for you that makes it possible to create and just do it because someone out there needs to hear your story. Do, 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 do. There you go. Hmm. That was um that was pretty interesting. I like the whole yeah. concept of, you know, just draw. No, it doesn't matter what it looks like. Just tell your story. Yeah, it's just like another sort of form of uh, journaling, but pictorially sort yeah, of nice. thing instead of just writing journals. Can you draw? No. <laughs> really? Yeah, really. Uh, can you draw Xena? Can you draw your dog? No, I get um, Kim's sister Roxanne to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, she's very good at it. Yeah. Yeah. But wh- where are you in the drawing of things, like stick figures or...? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so I've, you can I've, draw. <laughs> I've even got atrocious handwriting. Oh. It's just all over the shop. There's no, I, I don't actually have a style. I think it's... Your style is medical doctor. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, not ants walking on a page, but it's just, just like... Just like my brain. Fantastic. Yeah, it just comes out on the paper. <laughs> Well, as long as it comes out somewhere. Um, If you are watching us on Lance TV Ballarat Facebook page, drop drop us a message uh, in the thread if you've got something that you'd like to share with Cheryl over the the period of time that we're on. And uh, I will translate through the joy of interpretive dance. No, Um, um, but I will read your question out to Cheryl and um, go from there. Yep. Fantastic. So far, so good? Yeah. All right. Just seeing if there's any questions. I know that there's, there's a good 10 people watching right now, so somebody, somebody is going to have a question at some point. <laughs> Kim. Uh, <laughs> just, you know, just drop in any time um, as we move through. So I'm not sure when we're going to go back to Channel 31, but uh, we will shortly, and um, everything will be fine. Mm-hmm. Where'd you get your shirt from? Uh, online. Really? Yeah. Is it Timu? No, it's about the only thing I haven't got from them. Really? Yeah, but oh. they're, they're really dangerous. So yeah, yeah, well. The farm all your Especially if you're at that end. Yes. Well, they farm out all your information. Really? They're the worst out of everyone. Well, there's a whole big sort of paranoia about China at the moment anyway. But yeah. No, but they're worse than like Amazon and Facebook and all that. They... Makers. Welcome back. Uh, you're watching Lance TV. I am Lance DeBoyle and I'm sitting here with the one, the only, Cheryl Selozzi. <laughs> Just I had to write it down phonetically so I would say it properly. Uh, so Cheryl, and I even looked down to make sure I could say the first name right. Um, Cheryl, you, well, you've been hanging around us now for, well, you know, Lance here at Lance TV for a good 12 months, 12 and maybe Bit coming more. up for 18 yeah. months soon. Mm. You are an amazing human being, but you're not from Ballarat, are you? No. 
Cheryl, where were you born? I was born in the Royal Women's Hospital in Carlton. And where were you raised? Um, Mitcham and Essendon areas. Ah, yeah. Mitcham's east? Yeah. Yeah, right. But, but mainly sort of Strathmore, Essendon area. Yeah, Essendon, the, the poor man's Hawthorne. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> beautiful side of town. Yeah, it is now. Yeah. And you're the youngest of three? Yep. Amazing. Mm. When you were at school, mm -hmm. um, as we were talking about you know, prior to the show, when you were at school, you were really kind of the, you know, if there were Spice Girls around, you were definitely Sporty Spice, weren't you? Yes. Tell us, tell us about your foray into, into sport. Well, I wasn't because I was always the one that got the report. Uh, if I just paid a bit more attention and all that sort of stuff, so all my attention just went out into the sporting field and I did any sport that they'd ask me to do, I'd do it. Um, no, I drew, sorry, I drew the line at netball. Um, and running, you weren't, you weren't much on track no. and field? I, I did a short race and the, I remember the coach said, you look like you're looking for, for 50 cent pieces on the ground. Cause I was wow, running. that was silver back then, sure. Yeah, because <laughs> I, I was running with facing the ground and so I, I, I didn't do running until I turned 40. Oh, wow. Mm. So you got there in the but end. But I did everything else. Yeah, so yeah, you were, nice. I've got here, you've got softball, volleyball, table tennis. Yeah. You were really quite competitive, weren't you? A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us, talk to us a little bit about your competitiveness. Um, it's a good and a bad thing. It's good because it tries to make you be better, but it's also bad when it doesn't happen and then you just sort of bring it on your you talk down to yourself because um, I'd have to admit I'm a, you'd never guess it, a perfectionist, but because I'm an unattaining perfectionist, I don't normally actually start a lot of things because I know I'm never going to get anywhere. So that's a really big um, drawback of being competitive. But, um, but I, I've always been a good sport. I've always made sure that whoever is the best person wins on the day, and if that's not me, so be it. Yeah. You were also quite good uh, scholastically through uh, physics yep. and English. Yes, because they're so close, closely related. Absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So yeah. physics is the science, what, it's a branch of maths, but what, what does it look at? It's, it's mainly maths and energy, I'd say. Um, would be the easiest way to elect electric and also in kinetic energy and just just forces of nature basically um, is physics. Right. So in it's my kind world. Of, so physics is kind of the answer to the the the, the being and the planet and the universe and yep. forty two and it the is. and thanks for all the fish. Yes, and even uh, Professor Brian Cox said that the that number, magical number is actually 42. Really? Yeah. yeah. My, under, my understanding of 42, which, who wrote? Hitchhiker's Graham, Hitch Graham Adams? Adams? Yeah, uh, someone Adams. Yeah, someone Adams. Um, they said they said they, they recommended 42 as being the answer because in computer code, so oh. in that binary, yeah. that computer code 42 is eh, whatever you want it to be. <laughs> That's why, the, okay. yeah, that's why the answer to yeah. life is 42. It's life is whatever you want it to be. Yeah. So, but that's interesting. But yeah, but he's, in one of his shows, he's actually said that it actually is the foundation of life, the number 42. Not necessarily the foundation of life, but the foundation of existence. What's, I don't know, I'm really bad at the seven times table. I want to say seven sevens are 42. 49. 49. Seven so sixes are 42. Six sevens. There you go, you've learnt something about me. I know nothing about maths. Uh, and I'm a nerd. Uh, well, <laughs> I didn't want to be the one to say. Uh, with, with that physics and English, though, that saw you well at the tail end of year 11 at high mm. school when you were about 17 and a half. Mm -hmm. Where did you take your physics and English and where did you go? What did you do? 
I toddle off to um, the recruitment centre in Melbourne and join the Air Force, as everyone does. Amazing. So yeah. what, what, was, what was the thought with joining the Air Force? Um, I even got asked that when I was applying and I couldn't give them an answer then. Um, it was um, just something I always wanted to do. My grandfather, who I never met, who died in the Second World War, um, I sort of held him up on a pedestal even though I never met him and my mum was a child. Um, and I thought he'd done something good and I thought I'd like to follow, even though I'd never met him, I'd like to follow down those footsteps and the lifestyle in that respect was good because it was very regimented and you didn't have to think. Yeah, everybody else just sort of went, you be there, yeah. wear that, we're going here yeah. and now be there. Yeah. Amazing. But, but so um, so with, with the Air Force, when you, like what's, what's your, you know how in the Army you've got private and you've got yeah. Lance private or whatever that's called. What what are the what are the heights in like where did you end up in, in was, the Air Force? Um I was a uh, a corporal but I was waiting for my sergeants when I got discharged. So yeah. and you were there how long? Nine and a half years. Yeah right. Yeah. And did you serve overseas or No. Just in Australia. What did you do? I was a photographer. Really? Yes. With film. I know it's a strange concept to a lot of people, but yeah, just for film cameras. An analog, analog camera. Yeah, and um, we'd actually um, load the cameras up. We'd process the prints. We'd process the negatives. I beg your pardon, um, and then we'd actually print them, and we'd do them and through all the chemicals and everything. So it was from taking to actually handing them to the customer. We did everything. Wow, and, and, and how big were the how big were the frames? Like, are you talking kind of that normal normal thirty five millimeter, or are you using kind of big? Well, we had thirty five millimeter uh, Nikon's. We had um, one twenty Hasselblads. Um, <gasps> the cream, the gold yeah. standard of cameras. Yeah, 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 Hasselblad. Yeah. And we had Linos, which were five by four inch studio cameras, and so was Sinars. Um, and then you got the aerial cameras. They were anything. Well, on F-111s, they could be, the negative could be that long and that wide. Um, what, what, what would you be taking pictures of? With, that was reconnaissance. With some, so, like, you're taking strips of land or...? Yeah, reconnaissance from the F-111s uh, with the aircraft. And, but we'd, we'd actually just pull the cameras out of the aircraft and then just process and print them as well. Um, so it was all formats. And the RC-10, from memory, if that's what it was, that was... 10 by 10 inch um, negatives, so they're big. <laughs> and for those who are watching who have no idea what a dark room is, yeah. have you got a little bit of a description for what a dark room is, what it looks like, what you do? It's dark. How you see? Well, it's amazing how quickly your eyes adjust. Because um, with black and white, you're allowed to have no, it had to be total darkness, but if you had orthochromatic film, which, sorry, I'm getting really technical, is very short scale, it's just black and white, there's no greys. You could have a red light on, because that's just orthochromatic, it's not panchromatic. I'm getting very technical now. Look at it, it's all <laughs> flooding back to you now. Oh, no, it is. Um, and um, the luminescence on the timer, the, the second timer, was pretty much all is what lit up the dark room. And it, you just knew where you were anyway. You just got so used to it. So so you would have to develop the film first? Yep. And then wash and dry it and then put it in the enlarger and then put it on so a bit like of paper. So you'd have like a projector yep. onto yep. photographic paper? Yep. Yeah. We are mainly at the beginning when I was in, it was only black and white only. And then we started moving to colour as I was leaving, oh, about halfway through. Um, yeah, we just did the whole lot, processing, printing. So, yeah. so is it like you've got three trays or something? In black and white, yeah. yeah. yeah you've got your developer, your fixer and then your wash. 
All right, so one is to kind of... Bring the picture up. Because, oh, that's right, because the face of photographic paper is silver, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So the first one reacts to the silver. Yeah. And you pull that out and then you put it in, in the, the next fixer. one so it goes, you can stop doing whatever yeah. you're doing now. The fixer fixes it, stops yeah. it, and then and then you just wash them, the prints. Pop it in a nice little bubble bath at yes. the end. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, right. Not bubbles, but yeah. And then, then you um, put them on drying racks or if they're small enough, you just put them in. We had small dryers, but some of the large prints we did were like, like 10 foot by 10 foot prints. Oh, that's their big trays. Yeah, they were. <laughs> oh, really? They, they, I was yeah, no, no. Oh, wow. Yeah, they actually were rooms where they just, we just had um, just drawers where you just put the print there and wait for it to dry. It was very time consuming. Oh, before it wow. became digital, yeah. Wow, that's but, an absolute world away yeah. from, from what we do now. We just yeah. hold up the camera and go click and it's done. Yeah, I don't like that delete, yeah. No, you had, like, you'd take a photo and you wouldn't know until you started printing if it, was it, if it had worked out or not. Wow. Yeah. Old school analog, right? Yeah, really old school. Oh, gee, oh, gee. <laughs> that's me. <laughs> yeah. Hey, we're going to go for a short break and when we come back... We're going to talk more with the lovely Cheryl. <laughs> We're going to have a look here and it doesn't seem anybody wants to leave any messages for you. So if you're watching us on Facebook, head over to the Lands TV Ballarat page. If you're watching us from a, a, different, um, uh, a different page, and uh, you can leave us a message and uh, we'll ask the lovely Cheryl. And so there you go. So old school. Yeah. Doing all the bloody... Lugging about of gear and that. Yeah. yeah. It was great though. You can't beat the old style stuff. I don't think. No, there you Sorry. go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Um, and is it true that you dropped a Hasselblad camera? No, the lens. Oh. I was, because two F-18s were taken, it was when I was down at East Sale. Um, and I had the blade and I was by the tarmac and two, I had ear muffs, but I took them off because they were mucking around. And then all of a sudden they all went to take off. And it was like, oh God. And I went to take the photo and then they, because they're so loud, and I didn't have the headset on, so I just had to drop the phone. I had to drop the camera to put the muffs on my ears. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the first time Cheryl <laughs> said that. <laughs> yes, yes, the, the muffs on the ears. Um, yeah, so that was a, back in 1980. That was an $1,800 lens. Gosh. Yeah. So how long ago was that? In the 80s, so... In the 80s, 40, so it's, you're years. talking about like a $10,000 lens these days, maybe? Plus. Yeah, Easy right. Easy, plus. Just for a body of the, the Hasselblads now are, are around about 50 grand. Wow. Yeah, because yeah, don't they use the Hasselblads on the space the station and oh, stuff? Yeah, well, they use Hasselblads on the moon. Wow. Yeah. You can always tell that uh, something that's been photographed with a Hasselblad camera because it's got two little indents on each side of the film. Yeah, so right. you actually know if it's been taken with a Hasselblad. A useless information wow. for you. Wow. So like the, the actual sort of strip of film. Yeah, it will have like two little Divots. notches, notches yeah, going out. Um, yeah, and that will, you'll know it's taken. Welcome back. You're watching Lance TV. I'm Lance de Boyle and that's Cheryl. <laughs> Last time I checked. <laughs> That's, well, yes, two yep. and a half minutes ago, there you were. Yep. Uh, before the break, we were talking with Cheryl about her role at, um, as a, what were you? A, a corporal. Oh, a, co yeah. a corporal with oh. the Royal Australian Air Force. And if I do remember correctly, prior to the show, when I asked you, why did you join the Air Force? You automatically went, it was the uniform. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Well, so, my, my second option was the Navy. Army was right down. That was last. That was, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> so with, with that, you were with nine, nine and a half years mm. with the Air Force. So that's kind of three 
turns of duty and a bit. Mm. You left that. You sort of went, yep, that was the experience. Thank you very much. Mm. You had a bit of a hiatus. Mm. And then there you are, years later, resurfacing. Mm. Um, Commonwealth Games hit Melbourne and yeah. you were like, you know what? I want to volunteer for yeah. that. Go on. Why, why this sudden, like, I'm going to volunteer and the games will be great. Did you want to go in and see some sports or what did you want to do? I have not, actually, it's like the Air Force, I have no idea of my life choices. Um, for some reason, I just always wanted to, like, help and just do, yeah, just volunteering. I don't know why. I cannot give you an honest answer on why I do it. Maybe it's people-pleasing, um, quite possibly. Um, but that, that, was, uh, that was good fun. I got to run around, literally run around the MCG non-stop because I was working with the media. And, um, Were you doing camera work then? No, what I was doing, they had a media centre in the, in the members' section in, at the MCG. Yeah, I got to see it. And I'd, run, I'd go around to all the points around the MCG because I knew where all the official photographers were for all the papers and all the news, um, all the newspapers and all the um, sports magazines. So I'd just grab their cards out of their cameras because it wasn't filmed then, it was, it was digital. So I just grabbed their cards and then dropped them into the media centre and then they just sent them out sort of straight away. So basically I had, I managed to do it, going through all, all crowds, going up and down all the layers. 16 minutes was my fastest time doing that. Wow. Yeah. And you said you didn't run until you were in your 40s. Yeah, I forgot about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gosh, yeah. how old were you then? About 27, 28? Uh, uh, no, a bit older than that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, I, can't, I can't add. No, that's all right. Yep. Um, amazing. Mm. Absolutely amazing. And because and, that's not the first time you'd volunteered for something too. Um, you, oh, that's right. That's what you said. You volunteered when you were 17. <laughs> you paid volunteer. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um, but no, uh, the other volunteering was uh, after the Commonwealth Games. was the... with, with though, hang on. Oh, sorry. With, yep. with, with that unpaid volunteering, because I have, I have jumped a question. Oh, okay. I have jumped a question. We just doubled back. I was trying to sort of set out and you were like, oh, no, we're going this way. It's like, no, we're going to go that way. Okay. Um, we going, just going back to the RAAF. Yep. Uh, there, there is a question that I kind of wanted to oh, ask you yes. and it was to do with um, LGBTIQA plus representation in the armed forces at that point in time. Do you want to talk to that a little bit? Yeah, it was horrific. Um, it didn't exist. It was illegal. Um, I spent that nine and a half years in constant fear of losing my job. Uh, I was, for about eight years of it, or eight and a half, I was non-practicing because I was that scared. Um, and then towards the end, I, I did um, have a girlfriend in the RAF and Back then, I can't really say too much, but back then, you, if you got caught, you would get kicked out. So I was just basically living in terror of just losing my job. And it was horrible. It was really horrible. And the, in, within all the um, forces, females back then, you're either a slut, and if you weren't, you're a, they called you a lesbian anyway. So I, they gave me that title, even though I wasn't practicing, because I didn't want to go down down the hetero straight world because that wasn't me. Um, and I thought nothing's going to make me do that. Some people have to. That's fine. You know, I totally get it. Everyone's is completely personal their journey, but for me, I just had to be true to myself. So for me, it was easier to just be non-practicing. And then, but then what I did, then that's when I just started to really struggle a little bit um, because you're just looking over your shoulder the, all the time. And that was, that was in the 90s? Yeah. Yeah, right. So yeah. it's sort of really, it's like 30 years uh, ago. Uh, yeah. Uh, eight, yeah, sorry, late 80s. Late 80s, yeah. early 90s, yeah. yeah. So it's kind of like, it's 30, 35 years yeah. ago. And 
It was just, was it don't, what, what's, what was the old thing? Oh, like, that's American, don't ask, don't tell. Don't ask, don't tell. Yeah, that, 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 they didn't even have that in Australia. It was just don't, pretty much. But it's changed now from what I've heard from and I've been in contact with RSL recently and they're getting better and, and it can only be for the good, but I'm sure they've got a hell of a long way to go. But at least it's better than what, than what I went through. And people before me went through even worse. So, um, yeah, came through it with a few cuts and bruises, but came out of it. Because mm. you only just recently got your medals as well, didn't you? Yes, yeah. What, what was, did they give you any reasoning on why it took so long to get you your, well, your medals know. and your bit of fruit salad? <laughs> I didn't know I was eligible and it was just wandering into the RSL and she goes, oh yeah, you've served, oh yeah, you, you, you do this medal, oh, cool. Um, so besides wearing my grandfather's medals, now I can wear my own mm. on Anzac Day, which will be fabulous. Yeah, right. Mm. Fantastic. Mm. Thank you for answering that. So um, volunteering with pay. Yep. Melbourne Games. Yep. Uh, Melbourne Commonwealth Games. And also the FIFA World Swimming Championships. Yeah. Tell us about how they like <laughs> flooded. What did they? Where did they flood? There was a Rod Laver Arena, where they have the tennis. They just the I don't know what, how they sealed it up, but it just became a big swimming pool, Olympic sized swimming pool, and um, and they the all the courts out the back. They had like warm up swimming pools and everything. It was insane. And um, met Ian Thorpe there and a few others. It was it was quite cool. Um, and that was that finished the day before I moved to Ballarat. Ah, yeah. now we've got a good segue there. Yeah. We're going to take another short break, and when we come back, we're going to learn all about the journey to Ballarat and what happened at this end once Cheryl got here. And we'll see you right after this. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. We're just on Facebook now. Maddie Dunn's in the thread. Thank you for sharing this. This technical ability may be oh. lost soon. Us gay boys only know the other type of dark room. <laughs> uh, Daniel Bryan, love hearing Cheryl's story. Oh, thank you. Uh, Emily Hearn. Um, Go, Kyle, 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 Kyle. That's it, Kyle. Oh. <laughs> so inspiring. Yeah. And uh, Kim Waller's in the thread. Did you meet any famous sports people at the games? Where you said, um... oh, the Queen. I forgot oh. about. <laughs> yeah, of course. Well, very... She's not around to stick up for herself now. Anyway, no. so go go to town on this one. Uh, Cathy Freeman, Andrew Gaze. Um, yeah. Heaps Hang on, double back, double back. Sorry. Tell us about Lizzie. It was so funny because I was doing my running with the to the media thing and all of a sudden all the wind doors all got shut and I was like, I need to get to the other side. No, you can't. And she tod toddles on past and, yeah. And I was only like about, I don't know, 20 or 30 metres away from just standing there. And, um, yeah, and uh, cause I think Andrew Gaze... He'd retired at that stage, and Cathy Freeman, she was, she was in the lift. So you just say hello. Yeah. How tall was Liz? Do you remember, like, was she a tall woman? No, nah, a bit crouchy. Yeah. Was yeah. she like, was she tiny like Kylie, or like, was she jockey size? No one's that tiny. No. Nah. <laughs> was she jockey size or a bit bigger? No, a little bit bigger. Yeah. But, oh, but, but hang not on, as but, tall as but you. the hat, but the hat. Yeah, no. So yeah, she was, she was about five four. Oh, okay. okay, that's a respectable height for a queen. <laughs> <laughs> and and Yana in Pittman. All of the, in all of the senses. Oh, no. All of the senses of queen. Yeah. And Yana Pittman, she was hurdling oh, then. Yeah, yeah. she. Then. What's happened to Yana? She's a doctor now. Oh. Yeah. Dr. Pittman. Yeah, mm. she kind of came out of nowhere, really, didn't she? Mm. And then kind of mm. like did her and then was like, okay, bye. Yeah. Oh, no, she came back and did Winter Olympics as well. The, uh, was it the bobsled or something or other? Of course she did. Yeah. <laughs> I think she's the only... It
Welcome back. You're watching Lance TV. I am Lance De Boyle and uh, Cheryl. Oh, no, Cheryl. <laughs> I am Cheryl. Cheryl and Cheryl. Um, just before we went to break, you were talking about your FIFA uh, World Championship swimming, meeting the Queen, meeting all these wonderful people, and um, directly after that, you went. I'm going to Ballarat. Yeah. Um, talk to us about that. It wasn't my choice, but. Um, looking back now, I wouldn't live anywhere else. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, very cool. Yeah. You crossed paths quite early on with a lovely yes. gentleman by the name of Rick Youssef. Yes. Talk to us about Rick Youssef. Um, when I finally decided to come out of the bunker, uh, I found on Facebook Rainbow Ballarat or Rainbow Coffee and... I thought, okay, it's time to meet some people because I didn't know anyone here. And Rick was very welcoming. And so it was everyone there. That was when it was at races. Um, and I've been going ever since. How long ago was that, ish? Uh, it was about six to eight months before COVID hit. All right, so kind of the winter of 2019. Yeah, about discontent. Yeah. <laughs> Some more than others. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Yeah. So the coffee group started mm. and you just started engaging. Yeah. COVID hit. What mm. happened there? Well, I just went back to my same old lifestyle. So it didn't affect me like it did a lot of other people. So I actually got through COVID pretty easily, actually. Um, and then as soon as we were all allowed back out again, went back to Rainbow Coffee again. And Rick was still running it at that point. Yeah. And you started documenting, you started taking photos of, yeah. of, of the, the, the gang as they yeah. turned up for cuppers? Yeah, because uh, Rick um, was doing some travelling, so I'd take some photos and I'd send them to him and then he'd post them. And then he realised that, that he'd, he'd done his time, which you, you can only do it for a certain amount of time. And... Um, and then he, we did it over a gradual about six, eight, even 12 months, sort of a handing over of the reins and I took over on the third anniversary on December 22. Yeah, right. Mm. Very nice. From that, mm. so that's a volunteer position there. Yep. From that, you also run a, a group called Uncoordinated Queers, which is hilarious. Tell us about Uncoordinated Queers. Well, if you've seen anything I do, that you know it's totally uncoordinated. You <laughs> even fall down uncoordinated. I know. It's true. Yes, at least I saved the phone. But um, I, because Rainbow Coffee is only available to people that don't, don't work, sort of. So I wanted to create something that people could go to outside working hours whether that be on a weekend or at night, but not clubbing or pubbing, just something different. So just a little bit more activity-based, like dog walking, hiking. Uh, archery seems to be really popular, and so much so that one person has actually joined the Wendery Archery Club. So that's a win just for uncoordinated queers in, in my book, that someone has found something that, that they're happy to go, go to every week. It doesn't have, it's not coffee, rainbow coffee. It doesn't have to be um, rainbow related, but they've found their part, but I sort of gave them a little bit of a little push there to get there. So I'm quite happy with that. Um, and Tempin Bowling is quite popular as well. And it's really great to just see faces that you, I don't see normally at rainbow coffee and just the, the diversity is fantastic, actually. Amazing. And, yeah. th and that group's sort of, that's starting to grow as well, isn't it, the Uncoordinated Queers? Yeah, we have, we do pull the first Friday of every month and, and then another event during the month. Um, during the warmer weather, we do out, outdoor activities and then in the cooler months, which is about eight months of Ballarat, um, we do indoor activities. Beautiful. Yeah. And, um, of course, 
you're here volunteering at Lanst. When there's Brilliant. not enough room to volunteer, <laughs> Cheryl volunteers here at Lance TV. Yeah. Talk to us about your involvement here. Um, Remember, I gave you that 50 bucks now. <laughs> no. <laughs> unpaid, unpaid. Um, yeah, I went to, came to the expo that, that you held the other year and just because I love cameras, I thought I'll give video cam videography a go. And, and, and you were shown that through the lovely Erin McCaskey. Erin, yeah, she was fabulous. She was brilliant, actually. What, she, what did she tell you about videos that you didn't already know? Uh, I actually just had to set up because I, I've come from a still photo background. I'm, I haven't come from a moving thing, so there's your feet per second and all that sort of stuff. I knew nothing about that because um, for me it was just still photography. So, yeah, Erin taught me a lot, which I um, found invaluable. And, and how to set up a tripod properly. Yeah, right. Kind well, of. yeah, because I remember you were quite enthralled by that. Go, oh, now I know <laughs> how to do this. Yeah. It was like the best thing. Yes. How to set up a tripod properly. Fantastic. Mm. Now, being the award-winning, um, multi-award-winning television show we are, um, you are also a dual award winner. Sophie, can we bring up the photo, please? Uh, it was just last August that... Um, you were uh, awarded uh, an award by the City of Ballarat. Mm. You were recognised as the uh, Senior of the Year in the Diversity and Inclusion section. Tell us a little bit about that. Thank you, Sophie. Um, it made me feel old, but <laughs> um, uh, I was shocked with that. Um, yeah, it was like... And cause we had the lovely Belinda Coates... Sorry, microphone. I had the lovely Belinda Coates sitting in front of us and all what she heard was me go... Bark, 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 bark. Which is what you did. Which is exactly when what you I When you won this award yes. at yes. The, um, the other week at yeah. the Victorian Pride Awards. Please, yeah. to the camera here, show <laughs> us your award. Sorry. Amazing. <laughs> Now, that's, um, that's a bit of a cheese platter you've got there. It is, and I don't eat cheese. No. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Let's have a look. Yeah. Oh, it's got a bit it's of weight hefty, in it. It's yeah. got a bit of weight. Look at that. Volunteer, tw the 2023 Volunteer of the Year, winner Cheryl Zolossi, <laughs> uh, Rainbow Ballarat and Lance TV. Thanks hey. for the award. Um, <laughs> that's great. That's great. I mean, we started, off, we started off tonight's, um, you know, tonight's show with identifying you not being wanting or needing to be in the spotlight for, for you just mm. being you. And here you are I with know. a big award under your wing. But that's just like mind boggling. It's just out of the stratosphere, that thing. <laughs> but you know why you got it, don't you? Because Ange... No, you got it because good things. It's, it's because of what you give to our community here in Ballarat on at least three levels that we've discussed in this section, those, the Rainbow Coffees, the Uncoordinated Queers and the work you do here at Lands TV and that you, give, you really give of yourself for the betterment of this community, that's why you got that award, Cheryl. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Don't know what to say. And you know what else you're gonna get? You're gonna get this bag, <laughs> this bag from, all, from Tiny Pride. There you go, that's Yay. for you. And this wonderful, photo of me that you took <laughs> saying I was on Let's <laughs> TV. Thank you. There you go. Thank I've you so much. <laughs> thank you so much. You, you. you really those are a gift words. to our community. Those, thank you for those kind words. No, but it's true. So appreciate it. You know, you just need to embrace that, whether you like it or not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, find it, I find it difficult, but yeah, thank you. Amazing. We will be back. Uh, we're in the last throes of the show. If you're here for Bent TV, it's only about 10 minutes away. Uh, but when we come back, we will have a few things and then we'll be gone. See you in a minute. We hope you enjoyed our interview with Cheryl Jalossi. If you'd like to find out more, you can head over to Facebook and find Uncoordinated Queers. Lands TV will be back right after this.
There we go. Well, I'm looking in the thread and there's no new questions for you. That's all right. So that's pretty exciting. But yeah, no, it's true that you give so much to the community and that's like they just don't go, ah, oh, this person's got a Hungarian name, we'll just give them an award. <laughs> Um, it's it's really a reflection. That award is a reflection, and and the one you got from mm. City of Ballarat. It's a reflection of who you are to this community. Yeah, it's yeah. I wasn't expecting either of them. And you could only really swear at one of them. No. <laughs> <laughs> but I chose to swear at both of them. Yeah, under, <laughs> under your breath with the you know because I was there for the City of Ballarat one. Yeah. Oh no, I swore. Did so, you? Yeah. I remembered you with the City of Ballarat oh, one. That's you had right, the flowers, the flowers and you were da, 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 parading da, 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 yourself. Da, da, da. Yeah, Which, I forgot about that as well. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> Someone had to do it because everyone else was just really old. Oh, hang I'm on. I'm sorry, I'm being very ageist, we were, aren't aren't we? We, were, we were there. What are you saying? <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh, very sorry. dear. Yeah. Um, and and with, uh, with your speech at the uh, oh. Victorian Pride Awards... Yeah where your peers had recognised you as being a pretty good cracker of a volunteer. Um, do you remember parts of your award speech? I remember giving a big mention to Chill Out, um, only because we'd been there the week before. Yeah. Uh, and actually, obviously, thanking Ange for writing those kind words. Um, yeah, the rest of it's a bit of a blur. <laughs> Except for that fa 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 yeah. fa at this end. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it was yeah, a bit of a blur because we were all told, every finalist was told to write a speech, even if you didn't think you were going to win. Said, yeah, yeah, okay. And I said that to Ange and she goes, yeah, that one's, oh, okay, I better then. And I went upstage and chose not to read it. <laughs> so, yeah, that was the height of stupidity. Well, that's but, all right. But what I said, I meant everything that I said, but I did leave out a lot of things because there's a lot of people in Ballarat that volunteer that don't get recognised, like just in Rainbow Ballarat, the admins, that's all unpaid volunteer. And the advisory board, that's unpaid. Yeah. Hi, welcome back to Lance TV. It's time for All Over the Shop. Uh, meet the artist at Gallery 10 here in Ballarat. That starts tomorrow at 3 o'clock. Of course, the wonderful Pete Pilvin, world-renowned potter, will be exhibiting as part of that, uh, that exhibition. Beauford Town Market, the Easter Market, is happening at Beauford Town Market tomorrow from 9 till about 1 o'clock. Beauford's a beautiful little place just outside of Ballarat. Of course, it's International Transgender Day of Visibility on Sunday. Send love and hugs to all of our transgender um, family. Love each and every one of you. TBH Studio has got a zine mark on. That's at 57 Bridgemore, Ballarat Central. And that goes from 10 a.m. to, oh, it looks about 2 o'clock on Saturday the 6th of April. On Sunday the 7th of April is the first Ballarat Sunday Market at Mooreshead Park here in Ballarat. That's going to be a huge affair. Uh, can be queer. History can be queer. Quistri history is queer. And that's uh, part of the Shepparton Festival, part of Go Tave, and that's on the 9th of April. Um, Good Games Ballarat is having a jigsaw competition on the 13th of April. And there's individuals and pairs games. Uh, Good Games Ballarat sounds like a scream. 13th of April at 10 a.m. is an introduction to permaculture. And that's at the Uniting Care Building on Dite Parade here in Ballarat. The Great Strength, the, the Great Trentham Spud Fest is on. Uh, on the 4th of May from 10, oh, oh, it's across the weekend from the 4th of May to the 10th of May. Wendy Rule is returning to Australia and she'll be playing on the 24th of June at the Brunswick Ballroom as part of her Meadowlark album launch. The 16th of August brings us the Ballarat Writers' Festival at the Capitol in Bendigo there from 9 till 3 o'clock and that's two days from the 16th through to the 18th and of course uh, the Festival of Australian Queer Theatre is coming to Ballarat on the 22nd through to the 25th of August 2024. So I'm just looking at um, Cheryl's award again. Oh, I've got fingerprints on it now. I'm <gasps> so sorry. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> um, but in the break you were Thank also you. talking about the volunteers um, 
at Chill Out. Yes. And all the work that happened there. We were also there. Do you mm. want to talk to us about your experience of being out at Chill Out with the cameras and everything? Well, it was just at being out there in that weather was stifling and but you set us up well so our preparation and everything was very good so that we could bump what are, what's the term bump in. bump in and bump out really quickly and we actually became really good at it because yeah. we just wanted to get the hell, hell out of there because it was that hot but um it was a, i thoroughly enjoyed it and it was um, getting up close to the stage for a little bit. It was, because yes. one of your favourite performers yes. was on at about 3.30. Yeah. Go on. Jackie Walters. Yes. With, with the Lost Girls. Yeah, because I was going to go see Blue House on Saturday night, but I was just too tired because we were just really busy. Mm. So, But it was great to go and uh, for you to let me go down there and... See her well, it's the kind of boy I am, darling. <laughs> like you'd worked yourself, Janice, Janice. you had worked yourself into a frenzy yeah. and I could see it in your face yeah. and it was like, go down there, I'll look after this, yeah. you go down there and get in the shade for starters. <laughs> um, but just mm. don't worry about anything for, for 20 minutes, half an hour. Yeah. And when you, came, when you bounced back, mm. you, your face had completely yeah. changed. You were like, oh. I'm recharged. I have seen Jackie Walters yes. and trust me, she was recharged. Yes, <laughs> and um, it was good and took a few photos of Nate Byrne for the boys as well. So Something for th everyone. They were, yeah, they were quite pleased with those photos as well. Yeah. And, you know, just again, just going back to the, to the volunteers, like the, um, the mm. committee, the Chill Out Committee yeah. were like, they They're just amazing. worked, like we were there, like we turned up Friday night but on Saturday and Sunday, we were at Vic Park and that committee yeah. was just working the whole time. Yeah. Like they didn't, they, they didn't sit on their laurels. They didn't leave Jackie it to everybody else. Like they were in there yeah. working themselves into a frenzy. Mm. On, on like I'd, I'd seen Matt Clark, who's mm. the, the president of Chill Out. And he was like, oh, I had two hours sleep last night. And we just, and it was like, wow, you know, and it was just go, go, go. And yeah. I, I don't know about you, I received quite a, a number of feedbacks from people just going, this is the best chill out, you know, so well organised. It was kind of like it was okay. all jigsaw puzzle put together. Mm -hmm. And that was volunteer, mm. vo volunteer power. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, everything pretty much in communities runs on volunteers. Um, whether it be CFA, anything, Frolic Festival, they're all just run by volunteers. Um, and it's not for everyone, and that's fine. Um, there's plenty of people out there and there's plenty of volunteering out there to be done. Um, yeah, there was a thing, I don't know where I read it or where I heard it, but they, the, the story is that, you know, there were, there were so many volunteers out there getting out there and getting into things, then COVID hit and the oh, whole volunteer thing yeah. started to fall off. Yeah. And since 2021, um, getting the volunteer base back to kind of where it was is, yeah. is quite a struggle. So if you, if you move to do good things for your community and you have some time, uh, consider volunteering in, in an area that, that you're interested in. Mm. Yeah. I mean, Absolutely. for you, what has is, what is volunteering meant for you? Well, I forget, well it's even just here, I just get to, each week I get to meet different people that I normally wouldn't meet and just actually learn. Uh, I'm just gathering knowledge from all these fabulous guests that you have on. Um, I always come, go home after the show with a bit more knowledge, um, which can only be a good thing. And well, you'd want you'd want to hope so. You'd think at so. the end of the day. Yeah. But but do you get that also with uncoordinated queers and and the coffees group? Absolutely. Um, when you see, because I know what it was like when I first walked in there, and it's it can be really really um, uh, over overbearing. Is that the right word? I don't know, you're talking. Ah, am I? Um, <laughs> Um, but like Rick made me feel very welcome and so I just try and do the same um, and it's just the amount of 
diversity we've got now is greater than we've ever had, which is fabulous. I just love the diversity because everyone just feels comfortable enough to be in that space. Um, so, uh, yeah, I think that's my main bit of pride with uh, Rainbow Coffee and Uncoordinated Quiz is, yeah, no matter, um, it's, yeah, it's just so diverse and everyone's welcome. Amazing. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank, thank you for being a guest on the show tonight. Thank you. Um, to everybody who's watched the show, thank you for sticking around and, and sitting in with us for the last hour. I'd like to point out that Sunday is Trans Day of Visibility. Please reach out to your trans friends, give them hugs, lots of loves, and tell them that TERFs are dumb. Until next week, be kind to each other, and we'll see you then. Bye. Thanks for watching Lance TV. We'll be back same time next week. Lance TV is made possible through funding from the Community Broadcasting Foundation. I'm voiceover guy Randall Smith. See you next time.